Hey everyone, Andy here, back again with the Alexa XT, and now I want to show you a really cool new feature of the camera, and that's the ability for it to uh, load in uh, color decision lists, or CDLs, uh, directly into the camera as you're recording, and to lay those files down as metadata associated with raw clips. It's a lot of words to say that basically I can use a computer that's generating a look, a lookup table, feed that signal into the camera via Ethernet here, and save that look for each clip that I'm shooting. So I can have a DIT on set who's generating a look on a monitor, and that, that look is then transmitted as a CDL into the camera per clip and then saved as I'm recording at the end. So whatever adjustments are made during the shot are, are, are kept into the clip, and that, it's automatically linked with my raw data. This is a really great option because with the codec system, I can actually apply that LUT right as I download. Very cool. So what I want to do first to get this going, I'm going to show you the process, is to go into the camera uh, menus here and enable the CDL server access. And I can do that uh, by going into the uh, color mode here and to hit set look. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn the CDL option here at the bottom to on. Now, it says no connection right now. That's normal because I don't have a computer connected. And I'm, I do have, though, a, uh, an Ethernet cable here. So I'll go ahead and plug that in. And the other end is going to be plugged into my computer, of course, which is there. And OK, still no connection. And the reason is because I have to set up my computer, of course. Uh, and it has to be able to find it on the network. To do that, I'll go ahead and set CDL config here. And it tells me this is the IP address I expect to see. I could alter it, but that's fine. This is the, C this is the IP address that it wants to see to find the CDL server at the CDL server being your computer. Now, what I'm going to do to make this work is use a piece of software called LiveGrade. LiveGrade can uh, create lookup tables live for me uh, yeah, using the feed from the camera and altering and creating lookup tables onto a monitor. Very cool box software by itself. Here, I'm using it to actually generate the CDLs that will be sent back into here. So go ahead and save that, but I'll, I'll note the IP address I need to be. Still not connected. Let's go to my computer now and look at LiveGrade, how that can be configured to actually feed out a CDL. OK, let's check out the uh, piece of software now on my computer called LiveGrade. LiveGrade is the software from Pomfort that's going to generate those CDL files that feed into my camera. But it also is just a great utility overall for making LUTs on set. LiveGrade can control a box like the HD-Link Pro uh, via USB. And HD-Link Pro can insert a lookup table between the output of the camera and a monitor. It's just a great utility overall. And you can see here in the interface of LiveGrade that I can do things like adjust saturation of my feed. You can see that on my monitor here. It's hard to tell probably, but adjust the saturation, lift, gamma gain, shadows, midtones, highlights. I can apply a 3D LUT here or create a 3D LUT here if I want to. It even has a specific Alexa mode for working with Alexas uh, that are outputting log, and I can adjust ab beyond that. So it's a really great utility for making LUTs overall. You can even export those LUTs as 3D LUTs for other grading applications. In this case, though, I'm going to use LiveGrade as a CDL server and do that in the preferences here, preferences, CDL server, and start. And now it's going to feed out those CDLs to the camera. Uh, great, that's done. Got to make sure I'm connected to the camera directly, though, uh, for the communication to start. So I'll go to my network preferences, network, and look for my, IP, my Thunderbolt IP. And yep, I already put it in there the right way, but you probably would have to type this IP address in. It's a little different than normal, but it's in there now. Subnet mask at 255.255.255.0 is fairly normal, and it seems to work. So uh, the IP is there. That's set. Now I'll go back to my camera and make sure that it's, uh, it's actually receiving the CDLs uh, as required. OK, so now that's running. So what, what I have to do, again, is just, just make sure my IP address is right. Hit Save. And look, connection is established, right? So it, it found the server locally. It's running. Everything's working. Once I'm done there, if I go home, You'll see I have the little green box around the internal raw. That means, hey, I have a CDL server found. Great, everything's working. So whatever I do on that software now will be saved as a CDL to each raw clip. This is very important because that raw clip will now have a color associated with it with every one that I shoot on set. Very cool. All right, so let's go back to the software again and start playing around with the look of it uh, and save those clips. And then uh, we'll shoot a couple clips and go through the post process with the codex. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, roll a couple shots off and show you how I can apply those CDLs directly through the codex transfer. Right? So the, uh, the CDLs are going to be recorded to the camera's magazine onto the, raw, onto the codex pack. I'm going to download it and then use the VFS to actually apply that LUT uh, right as I download. Pretty impressive. So 
Uh, I have Live Grade going here. I can see the output of my camera. I can actually control the start stop of my camera through the web interface because I'm already connected to my, cam my camera for CDL sending. I can actually see the, com the camera here and even have it hit record. So I'm going to go ahead and roll my camera and I see I'm recording here. And I can go ahead and just adjust colors as I see fit. A little bit of warmth in the highlights, maybe. Cool. All right, so adjustment is made. Great. Go ahead and stop this recording. And it stopped. Stand by. And I'll go ahead and do one more just for fun. And I'll go totally desaturated so I know it worked. But uh, mid-tones will go really high. So change the exposure a little bit there. Cool. And once again, roll a shot. Not very exciting, but it's rolling. And we're standing by. Great. So the two shots recorded off that. Go download. The, let's go grab the magazine real quick now, uh, and we'll uh, see what we have uh, via the Codex Transfer Station. Okay. So magazine's reattached. Let's go ahead and open the VFS here. We see the same things I set up before had are set still there. ARI, MOV, MXF. I want to go ahead and go to my user interface though, and I want to turn on the CDLs that I saved to the camera. So I actually can add the CDL on as a LUT to one of the outputs. So in this case, uh, here's my two shots that I just did, by the way, VFS. In this case, I'm going to apply it to the QuickTime file, the ProRes file that I'm going to generate. So go ahead and do that. Hit Edit. Now up here into this box, LUT. I click on that button. It says LUT. Cool. It says, how many LUTs do you want? Well, I want to actually apply two LUTs. The first LUT is going to be just a is going to be a LUT that converts from the log, native log format that the dbared raw becomes to 709, and then I'm going to apply the CDL. It's important to do both of these LUTs because the camera automatically does that raw, that log to 709 for you, which I see on the screen here, and my CDL goes on top of that. So double the LUTs uh, is good. So I'll select here. I want to go ahead and hit select and just find uh, a LUT that matches my exposure index of the camera. No problem. Shooting at 800 right now. There's a good one, 800 EDI. This is a standard LUT that's built into the codec system. And then I'll go down to this one, LUT 2, and apply the CDL data. This is the CDL information from the individual clip, right? Cool. Select that. Checkbox. You can also set up that first LUT to be uh, exposure index specific to what you shot in. It can actually find out the shot's exposure index and use that. So it's all very possible. Select that. Great. Save changes. And voila, you see that quick time that everything flashed? Go here. And now instead of seeing the uh, clips with, a, uh, with uh, the log material, with the log look to them, very flat, I should see these clips uh, being a little bit more colorful. Let's see what happened here. There it is. LUT applied. The last LUT shot we did uh, had with black and white CDL, which you saw on the screen there. It applied it uh, across, just like that. So it's working. It's applying that LUT live for us. It's really great. And now, that means it'll that lot will translate through the post process if I create dailies with this way. A very cool option. Now, again, uh, if I went back to this file and edited it and turned off the LUTs, if I just got rid of, uh, I would go back to nothing just to prove to you that it actually worked. Uh, okay, no LUTs, save, save changes. Now, if I go back to that same clip, uh, you'll see that, that that same last piece didn't have a LUT applied to it. Here's that same clip again with uh, no LUT applied now. So uh, it does work. It's pretty impressive. So this is a huge option to have. A lot of people are starting to use this with the Alexa. I really I like it a lot. Check out LiveGrade. It's a great utility for a lot of things, even if you're not using the CDL server. So uh, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.